Hey, what's up? It's marketalchemist.camp, where we learn Elixir and Phoenix by building things. If you want to learn more Elixir, go to YouTube, Alchemist Camp, and join my newsletter. I send out tutorials regularly, as well as occasional interviews and other things. All right, so let's just start with an example where we've got uh, the numbers from 1 through 5, like so. And a really common thing that you do in a lot of uh, programming languages these days is you use a higher order function like map to transform everything in a collection into something else. So here we'll triple all the numbers. In Elixir, we get map from the enum module, which works on lists, which this is, as well as some other data types. And we'll map over the nums and we can define an anonymous function, probably the easiest way is just by uh, using fn syntax. So fn x, an arrow, and then the contents of the function. So in this case, it's just going to be x times three, and then we finish it with an end. So this will execute this function, or it'll pass every single item from this list into this function, and it will return the transformed list, like so. Now this anonymous function we have here is inline, and that's often what you want, but sometimes you want to uh, use it again. So here's how we can make uh, uh, a lambda that we keep track of. So we'll just do triple equals exactly this, and then we can do the same thing we just did, except instead of defining it, we can just use this function that we've already saved. And note that if you want to use a lambda locally or an anonymous function locally that's uh, uh, not being passed into another function like here, you have to put a dot after it. The reason for that is just for clarity because if you didn't have a dot after it and you're looking in your source code, you might not know if this were a function that was defined somewhere with a def and a do and an end or if it were just some anonymous function that only existed in the local scope of whatever you're working on. Another way to do the same thing that's even more terse is to use a capture, which is what this ampersand does. So this uh, is an anonymous function and the first argument to it is ampersand one. So if we do ampersand one times three here, this is the same thing as this function up here. So if we were to pass, uh, let's say we can just redefine this here, triple equals that, and we get the same result. Similarly, in our enum.map, we could just define the, the function here. So maybe we'll do times five, uh, ampersand one, because it's the first argument. Uh, this is also something we can do with, you know, reduce. It's fine if it has two arguments. So, for example, let's, uh, let's clear the screen here. So, for example, if we have enum.reduce on the same list, uh, so let's say we want to multiply them all. We'll start with one because we're multiplying up from one. So this will be one times the first element, then the answer of that times the second element, the answer of that times the third element, and so on and we'll define an anonymous function in here. Now we have two arguments, so we have a and b, and it's going to be equal to a times b, and so this will just, uh, this will give us uh, the product of all of those numbers. And we can see we've got it there, 120, and similarly we can, actually we don't even have to make a separate function here, but I'll just give you an example. So we can do this, or we can do the other syntax using a capture. So we can do ampersand one for first argument times ampersand two for second argument. So prod, uh, we need a dot since we defined this anonymously, five and three. Now you see here we have ampersand colon erlang dot times and then arity two. This slash two means there are two arguments in it. That's the name of the function. Uh, that's because this function already exists. This is already built into the library. So our reduce really just needs enum.reduce 
nums and this function, which is already named and already exists. And there's another one like that for addition, as well as other operators. So that's basically how anonymous functions work. There's a lot that you can do with them. And both of these forms are pretty common in programs. So you'll need to get used to both of them. Hope this was useful. Don't forget to sign up for my newsletter and I'll see you next time.